I'll talk to you guys about some of the tape takeaways um, that I've been having. I'm just pulling up some notes here that I have on my phone. Since I've been on the road, I've uh, been taking a bunch of notes. I've had a lot of time driving to listen to podcasts and li listen to audiobooks, And so uh, I'll definitely share some of my key takeaways with you guys. Uh, I was listening to a podcast. Let me pull up and I'll share the name of the podcast with you guys too. If you guys are interested in kind of mergers and acquisitions and buying businesses, selling businesses, exiting businesses, um, I definitely think it's something that we should all be thinking about. Even if you don't plan to exit short term, you should be building towards an exit and building a business that has a, a value and has a valuation. And you should be thinking about how to get that business to have a better valuation um, so that you're not stuck in the business. I find a lot of businesses these days, um, if, you, if you look at them and they're selling, like the, they're selling because the business owner is, is tired, right? And they don't want to run the business anymore. And then the terms that they're getting, like the, the, the valuation that they're getting on the business is garbage. Um, and it's because they really haven't thought about exiting at all. And now they're in a situation right here, right now, or in six months or in a year where they have to exit. Uh, and it forces people to make really bad decisions. Um, so I think that you should be planning every business as if you are, uh, you're planning to exit. So a couple of resources that I've been going through as of late. Uh, first is I'm in the middle of going through Built to Sell. Um, so I would highly recommend that book. It's been really, really good so far. Um, and then second is there's a podcast. Uh, and the podcast um, is by Roland Fraser. And so Roland is from Digital Marketer. He's one of the owners at Digital Marketer, and he's the guy that you hear about the least, right? Uh, when you hear about Digital Marketer, you often hear about Ryan Dice, you often hear about Perry Belcher, um, you almost never hear about Roland. And every single time I've been around Roland, uh, my head has quite literally rolled. Like after like 15 minutes of, of chatting with him, I'm like, dude, I, I got so much information. Like, I gotta go. Like, I gotta, I gotta be able to digest this so I can act upon it. Like, just um, th this dude is just super smart and absolutely spews information and knowledge. Um, his podcast is called Business Lunch. Uh, so, Business Lunch with Roland Frazier. So, definitely check that out. Um, one of the episodes. I was just recently, I'll, I'll give you guys a couple of takeaways from the podcast if that sounds good. Is that of interest real quick by a show of hands? Does that sound like uh, a couple topics worthwhile? All right, cool. All right, fantastic, good stuff. All right, so um, one, of the, one of the takeaways uh, from one of the podcasts that I listened to is that when Inside the business, um, let's say um, in Roland's example, he talked about how he used to be a part owner, an owner in a uh, in a motorcycle uh, helmet company, uh, and the motorcycle helmet company uh, oftentimes got sued, right? Because when somebody wrecks their motorcycle, it's got to be the helmet company's fault, right? And all the personal injury attorneys trying to get a big claim in, and so. Um, strategically, what they did in that business is they knew that they were going to be a target for lawsuits. The bigger that they got, the more PI cases that, that were going to come after them. And so for asset protection, what they did is they separated kind of the operations and they separated like the IP, the intellectual property, and the actual uh, like development and um, building and manufacturing of the product were separated into two companies. And the company that, that built it and manufactured it and had the IP licensed it to the company then that marketed it. And this allowed at any given point, if, if one of them got taken down by, let's say, some type of personal injury case, really, if it wasn't even their fault, right? If one got drained in, you know, worst case scenario is it gets bankrupted and the other one still survives, right? And then they just sign a new agreement with another marketing company that they open the next day. So from an asset protection standpoint, a very, very simple arrangement, right, that at the end of the day, I think can make um, a big difference. A lot of asset protection stuff that I've looked into anyways, um, it seems very, very convoluted and uh, frankly, a little nutso to implement. So that's one of my favorites for sure. Uh, a pot, Kind of a, a, a very practical takeaway, if you will. 
So the other thing, another takeaway was uh, the fastest way to build wealth. All right, so the fastest way to build wealth. And again, um, this is talking about a lot, Roland talks a lot about mergers and acquisitions. I think right now he's an owner in some 25 or 30 companies uh, he's an owner in, anywhere from 10 or 20% to um, 80 or 90%. Uh, I don't believe that he actually owns anything himself 100% and he'd be the first to admit that. He's very strategic, he's very, very, uh, thoughtful about how to scale a company very fast and, and turn around and exit. And so uh, the, the topic of the fastest way to build wealth was, was very interesting to me. So in the podcast, and it was just a short one, and, and I would highly recommend that you guys watch this. Maybe we'll, we'll link it up in the show notes or listen to this. Um, Roland talks about how on average, it seems like he's given it, getting about seven times EBITDA uh, for his businesses that he has sold or is selling. All right. So, uh, every year or so they're buying and flipping, buying and, or getting an investment in and flipping a business. Right. Um, and then essentially, um, over the period of four years, let's say every year you, you buy one, you hang on to it and then you exit a year later, uh, and you get seven, times EBITDA over the course of four years, right? You essentially generate 28 years of revenue, right? <laughs> 28 years of EBITDA in just four years. That to me is crazy, right? I've never really thought about it like that. 28 years of income opportunity in just four years, right? So uh, again, uh, when we push this out, when we publish this over to, uh, <clears throat> to to YouTube or to the blog, we'll make sure and put in the show notes this link. Um, definitely, I think something that should make you think and ponder, um, am I making the best use of my time here today? Let's see, what else? Takeaways, things I've been thinking about. So um, let's see. Looking through some of my other notes. Yeah, so um, two other things, I guess really one topic, um, but consists of two action items for me. I definitely know that I'm not the day-to-day -day operator in a business. I can set the vision, I can see the vision, I can come up with this strategic plan, I can figure out how we're gonna double it, how we're gonna triple it, how we're gonna quadruple it. I can figure out how to make the offer, how to make it convert, um, really ha how to set a business on fire. But if you leave me in it day to day, like my, my ADD drives me nuts and makes me wanna kind of reinvent the wheel and reinvent the business uh, all the time instead of it running uh, with, with a good operator. So we've talked about this before on the podcast, but I've really uh, this year embraced this. And I know that I'm not good at every role. Um, and I know that I need help in my business in order for my businesses to really grow uh, like they could or like they, they can. And that's just something that's been on my mind a lot. Um, I'm a big fan of the Myers-Briggs um, test for kind of um, seeing um, you know, where, where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. And so definitely for me, um, we just had a podcast guest on and the episode should be uh, published here any day. Um, and we talked a lot about, um, about the, uh, the Colby and the discus. And so I, I really wanna run those two analysis on myself, uh, but then furthermore, I wanna run them on the people that I work with every day. Um, I remember, it was a huge, huge eye-opening event, just simply um, taking the Myers-Briggs myself, really understanding what it meant uh, or, or meant, and then simply taking my, my closest five, six, seven uh, staff that work with me day in and day out each and every day, and having them take those uh, that, that same analysis uh, really threw off so many light bulbs. I could finally understand, you know, why, why, you know, somebody handled situations the way that they do. And so um, 
I don't know why, you know, it worked so well. It was such an aha moment. I haven't really thought about it since, right? <laughs> what do we do like trainings on, on hiring? And when we run our hiring process, you know, I always try to pinpoint the person and make sure that it's going to be a fit. Um, but I'm not sure why I haven't kind of educated myself more on these topics. So um, like I've heard of the discus, I've ho heard of Colby. I'm sure I've listened to some podcasts about it, right? But I haven't really dove in. So kind of two key action items for me definitely uh, is, is to go through those myself uh, and then review the results myself uh, and, and with somebody, uh, some of the people that work closest to me so that I can really uh, understand and articulate the data and figure out what it means. Yeah, Scott Lindsay says INTJ here. Yeah, so definitely, um, I, I, I gotta agree, I'm an INTJ. Uh, at times I can have some more of the E there, but mostly uh, an I, um, Scott. All right, so guys, questions, 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 questions. If you got questions, hopefully I got answers and I can help you guys out. Let me know in the chat. Try to see if there's any other notes or takeaways that I've had over the last week that I can share with you guys. Do, do, do. Um, real quick, uh, while you guys are typing those in, um, we've been pushing out uh, podcast episodes. Um, obviously, uh, at first it was twice a week. We're you know dropping that back to once a week because the launch is kind of officially over of the podcast. Um, but um, I'm really curious to get you guys' uh, point of view on what topics I should go after next. Okay, what topics should I go after? next um and we talked about disc a little bit um there's there's a um there's a uh, podcast interview uh with uh with myself and uh mads singers where we talk about disc and this is what really intrigued me to to, to go deeper on this uh with some of the takeaways i got from that podcast episode but i would love to hear from you guys again um what other topics you guys would like me to go after um the podcast has been a really, really great way for me to pick people's brains um, and, and for me uh, to, to be able to learn more about what I want to learn more about. And obviously then you guys get the like uh, fly on the wall type of experience as well, which I think is absolutely cool as hell. So let me know uh, in the chat if there's something that you've been thinking about somewhere that your mind has been um, in, in terms of topics. Uh, I would love to know and hopefully I can help you guys feel, fill some gaps.